Hi, I'm going to make a video today to show how I stamped an image on this glassine bag uh, that I'm using as a party favor for a bridal shower. So uh, I will explain to you some of the issues I had when I made my bag uh, so that maybe you can <laughs> take something away from my mistakes. So I'm starting my project off with a flat glassine bag that I've scored one inch along the, each side and on the bottom. I have done a previous video to show how I convert these bags, these flat bags, into these upright little lunch bag bo uh, bags um, that I find to be much more useful than when they're flat like this. So uh, check out my other video if you want to know how I did this. So now that I've scored my lines, I now know how big of a front I actually have to find an image that will fit. For my video today, I'm using the Stamping Bella Uptown Girl uh, Brett and Brenda Get Married. And I have first stamped my image on my Stampamajig using Black Memento ink, uh, Tuxedo ink. But when I stamp on my bag, I will actually use Stazon, which is the ink that I find works best for the glassine um, bags. Uh, the image is nice and sharp and black. Uh, when I used the Memento ink, it was more of a gray black. So position your stamp on a jig where you want your image to be, and then stamp. Uh, get your stamp inked with your stays on. Okay, I'm, I'm doing this in my hand since my table will shake since I don't have any sort of elaborate video setup like most of you do that video from the top, which I would love to be able to do, so I wouldn't need to be in this camera shot. Okay, so to stamp the image, I'm going to go ahead and stand up and be sure not to rock or slip when you position your stamp and press hard just to make sure that you've got a good image on the front and then hold your bag and then just lift straight up. and. You will see that the image has stamped nicely onto the bag and it's a nice crisp image. So to help with the coloring, I heat set my image with my heat gun so that the ink won't smear when I color. Make sure that you move your heat gun around a lot but you want to focus on the areas that are very um, saturated with ink, since those are the areas that will smear the most. If you stay in one place too long, the image will be, uh, your bag will turn brown uh, where the glue is that's holding the bag together uh, when it was manufactured. Okay, so now that I've heat set my image, I'm going to go ahead and use my markers to color the image. I always use Copic markers when I color images uh, that I stamp onto paper, but since this is on glassine, I find that the Copic markers actually leave streak marks. And if I use my stamping up markers, which never get used because I have my Copics, um, these do not streak and are actually better to use on the glassine. So I limited my Copic colors, but there are a couple that I'm going to be using today. Uh, I'm using E95 for the flesh tone and E29 for um, the hair on the gentleman just because I liked this color and I didn't have a flesh tone marker. I also like to embellish my image with my Prismacolor pencil to include some little cheeks on the, uh, the image of the girl since you can't really blend colors like you could under normal circumstances. As you will see, I kind of have a black tip there. And that's because even though I try not to color on the black lines, I do occasionally get 
ink off the image. So I just cleaned it off on another piece of vellum uh, or glassine so that it's not going to streak black. And then I'm doing his face. Her arm. You, you want to try to always color in the same direction and try to use long strokes. Uh, so let's see, I need to do her foot and her leg. And then he has his hand hidden behind his back with a bouquet of roses. Okay, so, so you can see where uh, her cheeks are kind of pink. Okay, so let me do her hair. I'm using Apricot Appeal. And since this is not a Copic marker, I can go in circles and it makes it easier to color your image when you don't have to worry about streaking like you do with the Copics. Okay. You can kind of layer the ink. If you go over it a second time, it's a little more prominent. Okay. I'm also going to, let's see, do his hair with the E29 Copic marker. His hair is a little harder to do because it's a small area. Okay. That, and then I'm going to do the roses. I'm using Pink Passion for the roses in her bouquet. Yeah, if you don't heat set, this little bouquet becomes a big blur of black. <laughs> so, and then for the stems and the leaves, I'm using Garden Green. You just want to be patient. Don't try to rush anything when you come to coloring on this glassing paper because it, it will smear easily. Okay. Do a little bit more here. And then I forgot she had a rose in her hair. And I'm also going to color this little heart with the pink. And I'm going to color her shoes in pink. Okay. All right, that is everything I'm going to color for right now because what I want to do now is put glitter on her dress. I'm going to use my gray memento ink and my black memento ink markers to do his suit, but they tend to be a little shiny when they're finished and so um the the glitter will stick to them so I want to I want to do the glitter first so that I don't get glitter on his his jacket and his pants so using my two-way glue pen I'm applying glue all over her dress it's a little hard to see where you have glitter so you might want to just look at an angle to see if you've gotten all the areas that you're trying to apply glitter to. Ten minutes. 
I don't want to run out of time on this video. Okay. And then also up on the top, she has her dress peeking out there. Now it does cause your bag to, sorry if it's shaking the camera. It causes your bag to warp a little bit, but it's all gonna be covered in glitter, so you're not going to notice it. Okay, so now I have glue on my bag, and I'm just gonna apply the glitter to her dress. And tap it and the glitter will come off where it doesn't need to be okay so for his jacket I'm using the black memento marker and you want to be careful to use nice long strokes in my first sample I kind of did a all gray suit but I decided I preferred this contrast of a dark suit and lighter pants. Okay. And then his gray pants. Long strokes. And then do his pocket outline. Let's see. I'm going to go over his jacket one more time to make sure that my streaks are all going in the same direction. And there we go. There's the image. I'm sorry for the glare. But it's pretty easy to do as long as you take your time. So uh, if you want to know how I made the little upright bag, just click on my link here. I'm going to put a video link to the tutorial that I used to make this bag. And if you have any questions, leave me a comment. Thanks for watching. Bye.